Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man who is currently recording this episode from James Bond Island. It's Sean Avishar. It's not just James Bond Island. It's the island, Mr. Hoffmeyer, where... It's the island, Mr. Hoffmeyer. Where I like Scaramanga that place. Yeah, it's Scaramanga. I'm the man with the golden gun. You're the man with the golden gun. Yes, yes. I'm on his island right now, because obviously Bond won, but then Bond obviously had to go off for other missions, so therefore I moved in. Oh, that's a, so. Yeah, he gets rid of the resident. Scaramanga's gone, and so is Nick uh, Nick Knack. And then you just move in. Yeah. And you've yeah, been there. So I, I've moved in. You know, wow. I've done. You know, I got this really great game room that I get to play in with lots of mirrors. There's a lot of James Bond mannequins that I can kind of practice against. It's you know, it's Roger Moore. You know, I got to get some Daniel Craig mannequins here. But uh, right now, you know, Roger Moore, it's good. Everything's fine. <laughs> what happened when some? What happened when people visit the island? Well, if you're getting invited to the island, I feel like I have to honor Scaramanga. So, therefore, if you're getting – if it's, this is the reason you haven't been invited, because if I invite you, then it's obviously going to turn into a, a, a one-on-one duel to the death. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know so, so that's why I don't have friends. I just bring my enemies. Is it true that it's you give someone a gun with one bullet, but you have one rocket launcher? Is that true? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's your that island, be, right? You can make absolutely the, true. It's your island. Yes. You make the rules. <laughs> yeah, it's my island. So, but I try to honor late Christopher Lee. And, uh, try to honor his the, the rules and precedents that he has set forth. God, well, that, that's honorable. I mean, I, and I, speaking I, of speaking of living on a secluded island, that leads us to what we're talking about today. Yeah, it does. Before you know, I brought you in. We you've talked about the worst Bond movie ever, which is Quantum of Solace, with me. And then you've also joined us, joined the podcast to do a football draft, but with only characters from 1980s comedies and David Fincher films. So that was an interesting draft. I mean, the football team was pretty good. We've had some people listen to it. They admit that your team would be better kind of in the locker room and speaking, but it might be over in like the first quarter with my squad with an alien running around. Well, between, people. yeah. I mean, between the alien and then Seymour the plant, while it's not mobile, <laughs> how do you get around it with that with the arm with the wingspan? So we would have been fired up and charged, ready to go, leaving the locker room, and then it could have been a seven thousand to nothing final when they actually played the game. <laughs> Chemistry only gets you so far, Mark. <laughs> the first two weeks, though, the lead up to it, your team would be amazing. Like you guys would just be. Oh, yeah chatty and i mean you guys would be all over sports uh sports illustrated wheaties i i'm i'd be like the the what remember the trailblazers from the 2000s or i'd be like the pistons like i'd be like the grumpy team and then you guys yeah. would be kind of you know the, the celebrated kind of thing like we'd be the drago you'd be the let's see the carl weathers you'd be the you'd apollo be like creed the Nobody wanted them to win. They were just kind of jerks and whatever, you know, just no, you know, the, the Jordan Bulls or, you know, we, we'd have the sexy TV team that everybody wants to interview. But then we'd get on the, the field and, well, a different story altogether would, would, would start to uh, start to evolve. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we could have matched up with you mano a mano on the field. That would have been a pretty fun app. I mean, that would be, I'd love to watch the game, but if you don't, if you can't obviously watch the game, but go check out the episode. It, it's a fun one. And that kind of led us into another hey. thought that we have is we, we're going to put together a group of movie characters who can live, who could easily live alone on a desert island. So, de so people have desert island movies. Like, what five movies would you take to a desert island? We're taking movie characters and putting them on a desert island by themselves. And we're not going obvious. We're not doing Wally. -E. We're not doing Castaway. We're making funky picks, kind of, you know, different. You can't go scare a manga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, we're going. So, I mean, I had some people that I thought about, but they lived alone too long. But then I kind of changed it. I thought maybe this would work. So I, I have some funky picks for you, man. And I, now, is it okay if I start first? I got, I got a good first pick to start us off. And I think so. You go first. Yeah. We're doing how many rounds? Eight. So we're picking eight. We're going to do okay. four, then four. Four break, and then we'll finish up with four. So what I have here is yeah. I'm going to start off with Michael Myers. Good. Now, Michael Myers, I mean, he lived on his own for a long time. He was in the, the institution for, you know, like, what, 20 years? No, wait, like 17, 15 years, 20 years. Gets out. Then he attacks Lori. But then if you're going to believe the lore of this character and all the different variations, I mean, this is a guy that has sort of existed on his own for a very long time. And in Halloween Resurrection, we learn that he's been squatting in a house eating rats. I mean, he slinks by. No one ever sees him. 
I think if you dump Michael Myers on a desert island, he will have no problem hunting. He will not be afraid of any of the creatures. Uh, I mean, he's, he's basically immortal. So if there's like snakes on there, he'll walk all day. He's walking all the time. I think he would be totally fine just murdering everything on the island by himself. And just sort of hunting, chilling, waiting to get back to Lori. Like he, he's just that patient. That that you know what I was I was you're more into the horror, so I was thinking in terms of the horror genre, but that one did not pop up, and I think that's actually a brilliant number one pick. I mean that's 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 Joe Burrow, baby. I mean I, I, I I'm actually a little impressed and a little. Upset I didn't think about that myself. That's great. Now, he's going to be... All right, so Michael Myers, he's going to be... I just... I would love to watch him build a palm frond home. Like, nothing would make me happier. Because we know that he can get in cars and drive cross-country. And we know that he knows how to fill up gas in vehicles. He obviously knows how to use a map. So I would just like to yeah. watch him build a structure. Like, that's my movie I want. Is Castaway with Michael Myers... Dealing with bad teeth, dealing with palm fronds, stuff like that. That would make me, like, eating sharks, just going in the ocean and dragging one out. That's the movie I want. So that's why I went with Michael Myers, number one. All right, that's good. That's good. Now, for my first pick, I, I kind of, I, I I really went off, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I went to the fringes of, of our rule book here, okay? All right. The guy I think that could easily survive on a desert island you know i had a lot but i this one just i kept coming back i gotta go bernie lomax from weekend at bernie's <laughs> all right well think about it yeah <laughs> think of that you know you, you gotta think about it for a second but the man is a survivor oh, even yeah. dead he is a survivor <laughs> he just keeps coming he keeps on ticking yeah no matter what you no matter what would happen on that island you could have monsters show up, right? You could have animals, you know. You could have sharks jump out of the water. Bernie is going to figure out a way. Yeah. Because he always figures out a way to to always stay relevant to what is going on at all times. So, so every time an animal, a disease, anything that tries to get rid of Bernie, it ain't happening. Mm-mm. Not Bernie, Bernie. Bernie, is, Bernie will always win out at the end. So, I, I, you know, I, I just the more I thought about it, Bernie Lomax, man, he, he, he is going to be my guy on that island and he's going to make it. And let's say people show up to the island. He could just play dead. And they're like, oh, this guy's dead already. Like, they'll just bury him. And then when they leave, he'll just dig his way out and go back to his life. Like, he's not worried about it. Yeah, and then and then all of a sudden, if like in, you know, in Weekend of Bernie's two, all of a sudden, if there's the voodoo that occurs, yeah. and he, he, you know, and all of a sudden he kind of starts dancing and coming to life. If he was alone, he'd be great. And then all of a sudden, let's just say people start to come to the island or whatever. I think he'd be their leader. Really? I think people would grab it. I think people would be like, "Man, look at this guy. This guy. This is. I think he just kind of has that kind of personality." Silent, um, strong, that be, steady. That's who I would want to see. That would be kind of number one on my list. Is is definitely Bernie Lomax. He, he he would. It would be pretty awesome to see what he could do. Have you watched Swiss Army Man with Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe, where Daniel Radcliffe plays a farting corpse? And Paul Dano just goes through the woods with him, and he rides him like a jet ski. No, I haven't. But now I'm, I'm making a note here that uh, that is going to be something I do in the next 48 to 72 hours. <laughs> it's an odd move. Like he he literally rides Daniel Radcliffe like a jet ski while Daniel Radcliffe is farting. It's magic. I I, I haven't seen it, but. The way you describe the scene, I'm surprised. Uh, you know, I'm sure when AFI comes out with their next big list of the hundred greatest scenes in movie history, I'm sure it's going to have you know, you know, uh, Michael Corleone in the baptism yeah. in Godfather One, you Rose know, Mark Brando yelling Stella, and Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe. And, I, I mean, yeah. it seems the way you describe it, it's got to be in the top five to ten greatest scenes of all time. Just the way you describe it, it would take Kramer versus Kramer's spot. Yes. 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 As far as intensity, I don't even think it's a it's a compet I don't even think it's close. Imagine if Meryl Streep and Dustin Hoffman were in Swiss Army Man. Imagine if the cast was I would pay to see Meryl Streep riding Daniel Radcliffe. Radcliffe. While he's just farting. There's yeah. so many farts in that movie. The lighthouse is <laughs> fart heavy. There's been some good farting in, in independent film. Alright, moving on. This character is definitely not known for her flatulence, but I'm gonna go <laughs> so weird. I'm going to go for Storm. 
from X-Men. Holly Berry's character, let's say she can't fly, but if she's stuck on a, on a desert or an island, like a deserted island by herself, you want Storm with you just simply because she can make it rain. So you need fresh water. Let's say there's no fresh water on this. She can just pull the skies together and you go. then you have water. If there's a boat that's too far away, she can maybe create like a tidal wave and bring the boat to <laughs> the shore. I mean, you want Storm there because she can cause storms. You have water at all times when you are with Storm. And if you need fire, yeah. lightning. She'll send lightning. That's, that's, yeah, the lightning I didn't even think of. I was thinking of the, obviously, the you need fresh water mm -hmm. because you can't drink out of the ocean. So, therefore, the creation of water allows you to, like, water to survive. I think you're absolutely right. That's actually, and it kind of fits in in the sense that you can't leave the island. I mean, you can't, you yeah. know, if, if you had the ability to, like, fly to L.A. and get some groceries or something, that go kind of would defeat the whole purpose. Foods, right? You know, you got to be able to, you have to keep them stuck, and that would, that would apply to storms. So, that's actually very – I'm actually impressed with pick one and two here, man. <laughs> and, and this I'll, is well thought out. And think about this, too. Michael Myers is always in the jumpsuit, so he's not going to have to deal with a lot of sunburn. Because if you go to an island, you're going to have to – the yeah. issue of sunburn. You, yeah. you, th there's a very real possibility of that. And also, Storm, she can just keep a cloud over her head. Always shaded. Yes. That's the one thing about when you think about the movie Castaway, you know, when he came back, I would have liked Castaway 2 where oh, no you know, Chuck had to go to a dermatologist. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I think that was one of the, 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 the plot holes to that movie. I, I think you're right about thinking it through in, in terms of skin care and skin cancer. I think that is well done on your part. And that's I think that your advanced scouting team for Kurt Russell's beard looks into those types of <laughs> things yep. that allow you to be successful in your draft. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy right now with my two picks. So who, who do you got for your second pick? All right. So I could go a lot of different ways here. You know, I, I was trying to think, you know, Bernie was, you know, was so good. But for my second pick, I got to go HAL 9000 from A Space Odyssey, man. <laughs> we're, we're talking about first he's a machine. Right. Mm -hmm. But he is an incredibly adaptive machine. Yeah. Right. Oh, so yeah. Hal would be on the island and he would be initially processing everything that's going on the island. He would know. Just, OK, what are the plant life on here? What, how do I survive? And he would just be constantly downloading it. He would constantly be uh, as artificial intelligence, always figuring out where the where the problems are mm -hmm. and then how to solve those problems. He would be perfectly fine by himself for an enormous amount of time. I mean, you know, the last time we saw him, he was in space all by himself. And he was more than happy to kick Dave to the wayside and, you know, kick it by himself for decades in yeah. space. So he would have the personality that he'd need the interaction with somebody else. And, uh, so he'd be fine on his own. You know, he wouldn't get depressed or anything like that, not having human contact. And that's something we're seeing here during these quarantine times is the, you know, the uptick in depression because people can't interact how wouldn't have those problems man no he would problems. be perfectly he would perfectly adapt to his situation on the island so I, I really thought about him as my number one pick but i just think bernie bernie lomax was you know the right the right choice in, in that spot but i gotta go how 9000 how would just he would somehow get the animals on his side I don't know how, yeah. but he'd figure it out. He could speak to them. He knows how to read lips, so he could read the animals' conversations. He he gets it. He'd have, he'd be all right there. No one's trying to shut him down. He's just happy. Yeah, yeah, he would be happy too. Yeah, he wouldn't have an enemy. And yeah. if he did develop an enemy somehow on the island with an animal or whatever the case may be, Mark, I'm taking Hal. Man, how's mm -hmm. how's how's taking it down, man? He's he he'll defeat any sort of animal enemy, viral enemy. He'll figure it out. I think it would be a really interesting film to see how Hal gets through and survives for two hours. That'd be the ultimate art house movie. The yeah. computer on an <laughs> island. I love it. All right, brother, you're up. All right, I got a I got a weird one here, and I don't I'm not sure about history.